What's up, everybody? Welcome to an episode showing you guys everything that I know about Udemy. This episode is specifically for people who are interested in making a course, or whether they and they're not sure whether they want to use Udemy or some other platform. Okay, and I'm not saying Udemy is the best platform. I'm going to be straight up with you guys. If you want to earn as much money as possible from your course, you're better off making your own website and figuring out some way to get traffic there. When it comes to a course like on Udemy, the reality is Udemy is a five to ten dollar course marketplace if you opt into Udemy's marketing then you're not gonna you're gonna be getting like four or five bucks of profit per sale of your course most of the time and this is because no matter what price your course is no matter what price you set it to in your settings um, aka highest is 200 lowest is like five dollars right no matter what price you set it at if you've opted into Udemy's, um, Udemy's, what's the word, sales, then the reality is like 95% of the time, your course is going to sell for between 10 and 25 bucks, and you're going to get half of that as profit, okay? So let me explain a little bit more about myself, what I did, how I was able to earn 2,600 bucks on Udemy so far. Um, you can see I, I started in October, okay? So this is kind of atypical. Normally, you don't get results this good. The only reason that I did is because I was actually working on the YouTube channel for six or seven months prior to making the course. And I was talking about making a course. It wasn't the whole point of my YouTube channel, obviously, but it was something that I was interested in doing. Um, and I was building a community interested in the course. That is why I had a you know, I've been able to earn money on Udemy. This isn't, I'm not saying that this is the best. You can definitely earn way more money than this. And there are people who have earned tens of thousands of dollars their first month on uh, Udemy. And the, the way to do that, ultimately, you can't just publish a course on Udemy and expect it to do well. If that's all you do, you are going to struggle for a while. You need to have some form of audience. And that's why I think that YouTube pairs really, really well, which is what I ended up doing. I started a YouTube channel and I was basically practicing, making videos over and over and over again, right? And as I was making the videos, people were like, oh, you should make a course. And then enough people were interested in that, that I was, eventually I was like, you know what? I really should. I could like, the thing for me was like, I, I made a course about drop shipping. I'm not a wealthy drop shipper. I know a lot about drop shipping. I've, I've, talked to a lot of really wealthy drop shippers. I've met multiple drop shippers. I know like I'd say I know more about different methods than most other drop shippers and I know more about the different software that's available. So I'm in a position to provide a lot of information to people about drop shipping because I run the YouTube channel and that exposes me to tons of information. So at first I was like, but I don't earn much money doing this. I shouldn't make a course until I earn money. But then I realized it's like, look, if you wait to master something before you start teaching people, then you're gonna be waiting forever. Like really, there's nothing wrong with teaching people what you've learned. There is something wrong with trying to convince them that you have it all figured out and you've got a system when you don't. If you aren't getting results, don't teach people in a way that makes them expect that they're gonna get results, okay? You have to be straight up and honest with people, and that's what I do in all of my videos more, is like, look, this is what I'm doing. I'm just showing you all the information I'm aware of, everything that I've learned, and if you can get over that hump of feeling like you have to wait to master something before you can teach it, I think that that will really, one, get you to a point where you can publish a course sooner, and two, it, it, you're just gonna become a better teacher. Because for me, honestly, I learn better when I'm trying to teach. Teaching something makes me learn it inside out. If I don't try and teach it, I don't learn it as well. So there's no point in me waiting until I figured it out because the act of teaching it is going to make me much more talented at it. Okay, so that's just a little, little, little side note about what my experience has been. I ran a YouTube channel about drop shipping and some other things for six months before I unleashed my course, and that's how I've been able to earn almost three thousand dollars from you to me in just a couple months, right? The thing is, I made a big big mistake when I launched my Udemy course. And so I'm going to talk to you about that. And then after I talk to you about some numbers and we're going to talk to you about coupons and pricing um, and whether you should use Udemy or a different platform, then I'm going to get into some of the more nitty gritty stuff about how to actually go about making the course, what to think about when you're making your course and what options you have. Okay. So first off, let me explain the biggest mistake that I made. Udemy has a coupon system. And before I explain the coupon system, 
I want to tell you one thing. The word coupon's a little bit misleading, okay? Because it's not really a coupons, coupon system. It's more like your own personal affiliate link um, that you can pick the price of as long as it's less than your course. The only similarity in Udemy's coupon system and a regular coupon is that if you want to, you can, your course can be sale for 100 bucks, and you can make your coupon for 50 bucks, so it's cheaper. But the reality is that you don't have to do that. For, in my case, for example, my course sells on, uh, on Udemy for the, the average, the, the price of the course is what, like $195, yeah, right? But it has never once sold at full price. Udemy always has the course on sale. So just to illustrate that, let's go to a incognito window and then go Jax, Multiple modern drop shipping. That should bring the Udemy course up, I think. Give it a second. Here we go. Okay, so because I'm looking at this in an incognito window, it's going to show us an $11 price. Oh no, it's $24. Never mind. So look at this. Okay, $24. 88% off, um, sale, get your dreams for only $24.99, okay, I don't know if you guys have much experience with Udemy, but this message here, your courses will always be on sale if you opt into Udemy sales, they make it look like the sale's gonna run out soon, but Udemy always, always has a sale going on, if they don't, wait one day, and then they will have a sale. I want to make sure that as an instructor, you are aware of this, okay? Because what you need to decide is if you want to split your profits with Udemy and have them do marketing or not. So let me explain a bit about how this works. You have a decision to make. When you publish your course on Udemy, you can opt into them doing the marketing, okay? So that means that they're going to push your course on their platform. They're going to put money into it. And any sale that their marketing produces AKA if somebody, a Udemy person is just browsing through Udemy and ends up buying your course, then Udemy is going to take 50% of the revenue, okay? But if anybody buys your course using a coupon link, then Udemy is only going to take 3% of the revenue and you get to keep 97% of it. So anytime that you bring in the traffic, you get the vast majority of the profit. Udemy doesn't take that cut. Udemy takes the cut for anybody who's purchasing it from within their website because as far as they're concerned, they're bringing you a part of their traffic that they've built so they can take a cut, okay? And it is possible to opt out of marketing completely so that Udemy doesn't push your course. Um, but the reality is then you're pretty much only going to get sales from your own coupons. So the way I view it is like they're all different marketplaces. Like let's talk about the fact that, okay, I have a YouTube channel and pretty much everything on in my course can be found in my YouTube channel. So a lot of people will be like, why do you do this for free on YouTube? But then it's available on the course. People are just going to get pissed off that it's for look guys. It's not that simple, okay? When you're talking about Udemy and YouTube, you are talking about different marketplaces. Just because I have something for free on YouTube does not mean that people will not buy that same information from me on Udemy. And let me get something straight. I don't have the same videos posted, okay? The videos in the course are more specific, they're more professional, and I've put more time and effort into making them kind of more efficient, right? Whereas the YouTube channel is free and it's more kind of at my own pace, just doing about whatever. Sometimes I'm distracted and it, that's just how it is, okay? But my point here is that things aren't as simple as you think. And I really, really encourage you to kind of do your research, but also keep an open mind because there is a lot of animosity towards Udemy, just like there's a lot of animosity towards PayPal and towards eBay. The reality is that when you're trying to do something that's worth doing, that can earn you money, the first thing you're gonna find is a bunch of people bitching and moaning about how it's fucking impossible, okay? Ignore them, seriously. Just don't even pay it any attention. Most of the negativity you can ignore and you will be completely fine. It does not educate you in any way that helps. It really just makes people give up, okay? But my point here is that Udemy has a coupon system. And the way that works, just think of it like your own link. So in my situation, I have a YouTube channel, right? And then if you go into my YouTube channel, you get a link to the course. 
And that course, or that link, ends in a coupon code, okay? That coupon code means that anytime somebody purchases the course through this link, I get 97% of the revenue, okay? And so what I do is I sell my course for $20 with that coupon code. And that means that people will pay 20 bucks and I'll get like $19 and 50 something cents or something like that, right? Keep in mind, sometimes Udemy has the course on sale for $10. If someone were to buy the course for $10 on Udemy, I would only get like two, two bucks and 50 cents. The coupon code in that specific situation actually makes your course more expensive, which is why I'm saying that it's not so accurate to think of it as a coupon because a coupon is a discount and that's not what this is. This is more like an affiliate link, okay? So, and the reason that I do that is because even though sometimes Udemy has my course on sale, I find that my audience usually kind of understands and some of them will pay 20 bucks even though, um, even though it's on sale for like 15 or something because they know that I'm gonna get most of that money. Whereas if they pay just directly from browsing through Udemy without using my coupon link, then I only get like three or $4 for the sale, which is very little, right? Compared to 20. And that, that right there, is the biggest mistake that I made with Udemy. When I launched my course, I had spent months making YouTube videos, right? I'd gotten a lot of practice on video. I'd met a lot of people. I'd developed an audience. I'd talked about making my course. I showed the, the curriculum. I showed making the course. They, I, I made it so that they could see exactly what the course was. So if they, like, if, they, if, they, if they watched my YouTube videos, then they didn't have to take the course to know it. They knew what the course was because I was showing videos of the course on my YouTube channel, which means that I get better reviews and the people who buy it are more likely to keep it, all that kind of stuff, right? But the biggest mistake that I made is that I did not know about the coupon system when I launched my course, okay? And now let's look at my revenue by month, okay? My best month was the month of launch, $900 in profit. After that, 500, 500, 600, and so far this month we have 70 bucks. January is a known good month for courses, um, but what I find is that because I get, because I have the YouTube channel, that really helps get through some of the slower periods. Because I so far I've earned roughly 500 dollars. My my profit per month from this has been fairly stable compared to other instructors that I've looked at. Like some of them have like 200 dollars in sales, and then 10 the next month. And it's like, that's a huge jump, you know? And I've only been like, look, there's only five months, right? So I still need more data to figure that out. But before I get sidetracked, let's look at this. So you can see here that there is a breakdown. We have Udemy Organic, Affiliate Program, Your Promotions, Ad Program, and Refunds. All of these numbers together make the amount of money that you get paid, okay? So Udemy Organic means that the person has a Udemy account, and they are looking on the Udemy website and they find your course there and they buy it. As far as Udemy is concerned, somebody from Udemy's traffic purchased your course. So they're going to get 50% of that. Affiliate program is where another instructor or somebody else is showing links to your course. Okay, So in that situation, Udemy still takes their 50% and the affiliate person gets 25% of the of of, of the price, so you get the same the same percentage as the affiliate linker, okay? And then we have from your promotions, and these are sales directly to your coupons. And so you can see here, this first month, I did not start the coupon system until the last two days, and that screwed me. That was a $2,000 mistake. And let me explain to you why, okay? So we had like, I don't remember how many students, but I don't, I don't need to do it exactly. I just need to show you the concept, right? So for the first hundred, most of my signups, as you can see, were in the first month. And I didn't have the coupon system, right? So of this $693, the vast majority of those were my own audience that knew about my course and purchased it the first day that I launched it. That was my biggest selling period, right? Was at the very beginning because I'd been building that audience, talking to them about the course. They knew about it. They were aware about it. They bought it because of my YouTube channel, right? But because I didn't have a coupon system set up, I only got an average of $3.40 of profit 
per sale of the course for those people who were my traffic, okay? So that means that, let's say, let's see, I got 693 bucks, let's say $500, because I know the vast majority of it was my own traffic for the first month, um, because Udemy kind of waits to, to market, so the more that you've been selling, then the more that they'll push you, right? Your first month is really mostly up to you, okay? So let's say that $500 of it was from, um, was from those those course sales that I created the audience for, but I didn't claim with a coupon code, right? So 500 of them and an average profit of, uh, let's say $4, that means that that was from 125 sales of the course, okay? Those 125 people, if I had used a coupon code, then I would have earned like $19 something cents. So instead of earning like 500 bucks from those people and earning you to me two grand, I earned, well, I, yeah, instead of me earning 2.5 grand from those people, you to me earned that 2.5 grand and I just got a couple hundred dollars. That was my biggest mistake. Make sure that if you launch, you have a coupon system set up at launch. It is absolutely critical. And now, now that we understand that at launch, I did not have a coupon system set up. So it looks like the my promotions column or the green one there is only a very small fraction of my sales. But if you look closer at it, you can see that that changed after the first month. And that's because I didn't start the coupon system until like the very last or second to last day of that month, okay? So then we jump to this month, and look, our promotions actually are half of our sales. So we go from having 45 to $700 to 50%, which is a huge difference. And then look here, our promotions are actually more of our sales. And then look here, again, our promotions are more of our sales. Coupons are what get you money. You want to get that 97%, okay? So now I think you understand a little bit better that you can have, you can opt into Udemy marketing, right? And they're going to push your course. They're going to take money when your course sells. The thing that I think is best is actually to do both, which is what I do, right? So you let Udemy market the course and then they get most, they get half the money for whatever, um, whatever traffic they pull in that buys the course. But you focus on developing your audience and for purchases through your promotions, you get 97% of it, right? So that's where you'll get most of your money. But I don't think it makes sense to only do your promotions because it's not like, like I wasn't going to get those buyers from you to me anyway. So I don't mind having the extra money, right? Like that being said, I would rather have both, okay? So now that we've talked about coupons, I think you understand how the payment system works. Um, I could give a little note here. It, it's going to take you like two or three months to get your first payment. So the course was launched in October, right? But I didn't get my first payment until December 8th. So that's November, December, about 60 days later. And then after that, it's every 30 days, right? But there is a delay at the beginning, and that's so that they can make sure everything goes right, you're not cheating or doing anything wrong, all that kind of stuff, okay? So now that we understand this, let's talk about some more of the nitty gritty parts of actually creating a Udemy course. To do this, I'm going to talk to you about what I did to learn about making courses before I um, published my course. I took a couple courses. I think Udemy has a specific course about how to make a Udemy course, how to make Udemy course. Yeah, there's an official one about how to make a Udemy course. But uh, don't pay for a course, guys. Like, I really don't think that it's... It, it really depends on what you're trying to do. Like, if you're trying to teach something and you're talking about, like, mo like 10, 20, 30 hours of content, like, for example, um, a course like this, how to... Uh, how to program Python. If you're doing some kind of course that's really in detailed and is going to take you a long time to make, then maybe it's worth investing in something in order to do it, right? But if you're making a course that isn't, okay, these actually 1.5, 3, that, 
these are not the courses that I'm talking about. See, this is what most people would do. It's like between like three and 10 hours of content, you're not putting in hundreds of hours of work into making the course, right? But then you have stuff like this, 13.5 hours, 148 levels or lectures. This is more like a course that somebody put a lot of effort into, right? But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. My point here is that I took a couple courses about making courses, and honestly, I didn't find that they were useful. Most of the courses tell you really, really basic stuff, which is like, all right, you need to go here. You need to make your curriculum. And basically, they just show you how to do the stuff that you could imagine you would have to do in order to make a course. And I actually have a big disagreement with this. So let me tell you what most people teach you. They will say that, okay, first what you need to do is you need to make a layout of your curriculum and include every single concept that you're going to talk about. And then you go through and make the videos for the course, okay? That is under the impression that you know exactly what your course is going to look like from the beginning. And the reality is that the vast majority of us do not know that. We just know that we want to make a course. And so this is how you should start, okay? You're going to start, you're going to go into instructor, create a course. Seriously, you can do this right now because I really encourage you to. This is going to be important. Go to instructor, create a course, and then just start filling out these fields. All right, that's going to be your first step before you even worry anything about how to deal with um, or like how to lay the course out and what it's going to look like and the lectures. Before you worry about any of that, you're going to just fill this information out. Don't worry about it. Just fill it out. You are going to change this information later, but what you need to do is start developing what the course will look like in your head. Because you need to be aware of the experience that the person's getting and make sure that you maintain awareness of that and stay flexible and adapt adaptive. If you think that you know exactly what the course is and then you lay it out and then you just make all the videos, what you're probably gonna find is that as you make the videos, you get better ideas about what order the videos should be in and what other topics are gonna to be necessary to cover. That process of figuring out what to put in your course happens naturally by making videos to put in your course. So all you really need to start is click create a course and then do this stuff, right? And then it gets to the point where you're gonna make your first video. And don't worry, you don't need to think about every different thing that's gonna be in the course. What you need to do is identify one specific video that you can make that you know you can do now. You don't have to think about like how it's, where it's gonna go, what section it's gonna be in or any of that. You need to make that one video, okay? And then in doing that one video, that's gonna kind of get you in the mood, it's gonna get your head thinking, your brain spinning in the good way, the cogs turning, and then you're gonna understand, okay, well, this is what my second video is gonna be about. Or okay, now, now I see that I'm gonna need a section introducing the settings for people who don't know how to set them up. I didn't think about that before. And it's much, much easier to figure out what's gonna be in your course by the act of making the course than it is to start at the very beginning and try and figure out exactly what your course is gonna be and try and think about all the different variables before you start making it. I really encourage you to make the course as you go because this is gonna allow you to be more flexible and it's gonna mean that your course, course results in a better end product. This isn't always true, obviously. If you are already a teacher, you know exactly what you're doing, you have tons of experience teaching people, then you know, like, you're probably not gonna be watching this YouTube video anyway. You know, if you already have experience with courses, then it's different because you understand what a course is like. But most of the people interested in making a course on Udemy, they don't make courses professionally, right? So it's really important that they, they don't waste their time like thinking too much about the, the things that could happen, okay? And so we've, we've covered that, right? We've covered out how that concept of, I really encourage you, don't waste tons of time trying to lay out your entire course at the beginning. You should start out just, you don't even need to make a single video yet. Go to Udemy, go click create a course, and then just start filling out the course goals, and start filling out the course landing page. Fill out as much information as you know at the moment, and don't worry, it doesn't need to be perfect. Look guys, if you spend five minutes rushing through this now, in a couple weeks, you will know exactly what the best things to change are. You're probably gonna change all of this information, but my point is that if you try and get it perfect the first time, first off, you're not gonna be able to, so you're just wasting your time, okay? What you need to do is just get it done. 
get this first part done, and then move on to the, the creating the videos. In doing that, you're then going to know, okay, now I've created the course. Now I've created the videos. So it's much easier to explain what knowledge and tools are required once you've actually created the course. Making it at the beginning is kind of like, uh, it's, it's a lot of guesswork, right? But it helps kind of lay the foundations in your head of what you're going to make the videos about. So again, I really, I, I hate to be this redundant, but I really encourage you, don't try and make the whole layout of your course at the very beginning. Focus on identifying one to three videos that you can make now. Make those videos. And then once you've made those videos, then you'll be able to know what your next videos are going to be. And if you maintain that flexibility, your course is going to be much better. It's going to be much more thorough and much more robust than if you just try and predict everything right now. Okay? So now that we've talked about how to go about like the mentality of if you're making your course on Udemy, let's talk about software. So there are two main pieces of software that I use. I use OBS to record all of my videos. OBS is typically used by video game streamers. And the reason that I love OBS is because it minimizes most of your post processing and editing. As you can see, I have an image of my like face in the bottom right and I don't have to do any editing to get that there. This is being recorded live at the moment where I'm seeing the screen and we see the image. I don't have to edit anything to put that image there. This is the output file. What you're seeing here is the screen that gets recorded. So it causes that wall of mirrors thing because I'm recording the screen but also looking at the screen I'm recording and it looks weird, right? So don't worry about that too much. But OBS, guys. I really recommend it. Um, one of the reasons I like it a lot is because it's free. It also enables you to live stream, and there are so many things that you can do with OBS. Like, imagine that you want um, some kind of introduction, right? You can just put a video file in OBS, press record, play the video file, and then once the video file ends, then your face and everything is there. So you made the file once, you never need to edit the file again to add the video because OBS does everything live. Like, look, I can even change the location of this while I'm recording live. And that is incredibly powerful. You can do a lot with this concept, right? So OBS is great. I'm not going to show you how to use OBS, but OBS is what I use to capture the information, okay? And then I use Wondershare Filmora to do editing. And editing includes blurring out customer sensitive information. And for me, that's pretty much most of the things I do. But you can also add like title screens, you can play with color formats, you can do noise removal, which is something that you're going to need to do for you to me and I'll get more into that later. Um, there's, there's just tons and tons and tons of stuff you can do with it. So those two tools are what I use. I use Wondershare Filmora, and I use OBS. Wondershare from Mora is paid software, but we're talking about like 40, 50 bucks for a year of use. It's really not that expensive, especially if you think about how much video editing software used to be. It used to be hundreds of dollars. You don't have to dish out that much money anymore. You can get great software for 40, 50 bucks, okay? So I recommend Wondershare from Mora and then also OBS. And that's all the software that you need, okay? So we've covered the software, and that's going to mean that you have the, the things on your computer to capture video and then to edit that video, and also to edit audio levels, because that's something that you're going to notice, okay? So now that we've talked about that, let's move on to kind of the navigating the course curriculum area, okay? So we're going to go into our instructor dashboard here. And then we're going to click on go to course management. And now we're going to click on our curriculum. So when you're in this section, if you just started your course, it's going to be blank. And I'm, I'm going to dedicate a, a whole part of this video to navigating this curriculum because it's kind of weird to navigate it and to create entries. It takes a bit of getting used to like there are sections and then there are lectures. And then within the lectures, you can add content. Okay, so usually what you do is you go down to the bottom and then you go add section, test section. Okay, we're going to add the section and now we're going to do add lecture, test lecture one. Now we're going to add another lecture, test lecture two. Okay, 
And just for the heck of it, we're going to add a third test. Lecture 3. All right? And so because this is in the bottom, that worked really well. We just added the section and then added each lecture into it. But what if we want this to actually be the first section? Oh, oh, that's, I mean, that's easy. All we have to do is just drag this section over up here, right? No, that's not how it works. Look at this. All of these lectures, these three test lectures, are now in the final video section. And the test section just went up there and replaced this and reorganized everything. It's confusing, and that's because you can only organize one element at a time, all right? So I screwed everything up here. So what we're going to do is just exit out of that and hope that um, everything's fine. I just wanted to show you that navigating that is, is frustrating, and you're, it's going to take you a while to get used to it because every time you add a video, you have to drag it from the very bottom of the list all the way into the top. So imagine that I want to add one video to my introduction section, okay? I can't just click here and then add a lecture. What I have to do is go all the way to the bottom, find my lecture, drag it all the way to the top like this, all the way, all the way, and then put it in. And I have to do that every single time I want to add content. It's really frustrating. Like it, it, it's just like a basic thing that doesn't work well. And yeah, but you'll get used to it eventually. And once you get everything figured out, it's fine. So now I'm just going to get rid of all of these. Um, it's actually once you have a course published, it's way easier to add content to it because once it's published, Udemy just kind of trusts that you're. They don't require you to review anything. Um, so we're going to get rid of this. Are we good? Guest, good, good. Okay, now we're back to normal. All right, awesome. So what else can we talk about? There's a lot to cover in this video, guys. I know it's it's a long video, but I think it's going to be useful for those of you who are actively interested in making a course. Um, so it is important to keep in mind that you, you want to keep each of your videos between 5 and 10 minutes. That is important. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, curriculum. So yeah, you would go through, and I would encourage you, what, what I usually do is I know the videos that I'm going to make, right? So I make a section, and then it doesn't really matter what the section's name is, because don't waste too much time trying to think of the order of your videos yet. What you should do is kind of don't start with the introduction. Start with the stuff that you know you have to make. Make videos about that and make the videos in a way that they can be ordered anywhere in the course, right? Don't be like, well, previously you had the introduction. Well, now you have this video. Just get straight to the point. Be specific, right? Because then that's going to enable you to kind of stay open-minded and you're not going to waste a whole lot of time. So all you need to do is make a section and then make the lecture. And then once you've made the lecture, like you could see at the bottom where we had the test lecture, then you can click on the arrow and then add resources or add content, right? And then you can add the video. And uploading videos to Udemy is frustrating for sure. And the reason it's frustrating for me is because they don't really... they. There's a lot of file formats for video that Udemy recognizes but doesn't work well with, which is silly because they should just reject them, right? What I've learned is that you want to use like an MP4 file format. Um, you don't want to use FLV files. I use FLV files when I record in OBS, and the reason that I do that is because if, I, if OBS crashed right now, I wouldn't lose this video. FLV files are built as you go, right? So I could actually view this file as it's being written, and it's going to have everything up until the point that it crashed, okay? Whereas uh, other files, if the program crashes while the, the file is being recorded, then the whole file is corrupt, okay? Because it does some stuff at the end that finalizes it. With FLV, usually that doesn't happen. So FLV is more durable, basically, and that's why I use FLV. And it's also a much, much smaller file size which is really, really great because I have a four megabit inter internet connection here, okay? So we've discussed software. We've discussed navigating the curriculum. We've discussed how you can go about making your course and how really it's just a matter of getting down to recording the videos. Now, if you, if you look at Udemy's official course on making courses, they're going to talk a lot about quality levels of audio and video. And all right, don't be too intimidated by that. Quality is important. But content 
as David Vu would say, content is king. If you have content in your course that is not contained by most other courses on the platform, your course will do well even if your video isn't complete crisp 1080p with perfect lighting, okay? Perfect lighting and perfect video and perfect audio isn't going to make up for a lack of content. Content is more important than your video or audio quality. That being said, video and audio quality is important, but audio quality is more important than video quality. So now let me talk to you a little bit more about audio and about lighting. What you're gonna find when you're recording videos is that it's not about being lit, like having a strong light. Like if you think about it, like, okay, this room's dark right now. You guys can tell this, you know, my face is kind of dark. This isn't great lighting for a recording. The main reason for that is because the light is behind me. You want all the light to be spread over as much as possible so there's as few shadows as possible on your face, right? The best way to do that is actually to have diffuse lighting. You don't wanna have one spotlight right on your face. What you want is like a white wall in front of you and then you want that spotlight shining at the white wall and all of that light is gonna bounce off at a bunch of different angles and light you up really, really well, even though the light isn't directly shining on you. Right now, if you look at, the, if you look at my video feed, you can see that this is a bad lighting situation because we have a light in the background that's lighting the background up, whereas the foreground where my face is, is dark. You don't wanna do that when you're recording videos for the course. You wanna make sure that you have decent lighting. And the easiest way to get a good lighting setup is actually just to paint a room like white, paint a wall white, get a lot of lights and then shine it at that wall and then just kind of put a desk right in front of it so that you are working and the light is bouncing off of the wall and highlighting most of your body, right? Having clear light is important. It's not super critical though, honestly, guys. I wouldn't worry, Don't you don't have to drop hundreds of dollars on a really nice camera or anything like that. Just do the best that you can. Get equipment that you can get and work with it. Don't not make a course because you feel like you don't have good enough equipment. Content is more important than the quality of your video and your audio. That being said, audio is more important than the quality of your video. If you have really loud, crackly audio, that's gonna turn a lot of people off because it's going to distract them from your content. So in that situation, quality is important because it is affecting your content. It is getting in the way of your content. And that's most likely to happen with audio. So make sure that you don't have crackly audio. If you are recording from a computer, I recommend getting a Yeti microphone. I have a blue Yeti microphone. You can get them for like $90 used on eBay. They are really, really, really great microphones. What I love about them is that they pick up the voice in front of them quite, quite well. Like you guys can probably hear there's people talking in my background, that kind of thing. But when I'm talking, it's not so obvious. Like right now you can't really hear anything even though there's people having dinner in the next house over and they're being, you know, I, you can hear them. Um, Yeti mics are really good at kind of understanding what is being what the noise is coming from right in front of them and kind of not paying attention to a lot of the ambient noise. And that makes it really good for recording podcasts and uh, that kind of audio recording. Because the reality is that we don't all have perfect control over our environments. So sometimes it's not that simple. We can't just get a perfect recording environment. Okay, But do your best to not have background noise, not have like a truck rolling by, that kind of thing. I like Yeti mics, I think that they're great, um, but there's a whole bunch of other options. Don't You don't need to drop a whole lot of money. Like I have, a, I, have a, I have a $100 microphone because I run a YouTube channel and I make courses and I'm perfectly happy with this. I'm not gonna drop $600 on a fancier, fancy, super fancy studio mic, right? It just wouldn't be worth it to me. I don't think that you need top notch equipment. What you need is content that other people don't have. You need to have something in your personality or something that is different than other people. That is really, really important. Okay, so we've talked about video quality, audio quality. All right, now, now let's talk about um, Udemy's kind of review process. So imagine that you've put in some videos, you have some sections, you've filled out your information, and you want to publish your course. All right, great. This is your first course to publish. So Udemy won't let you just publish the course. What they're going to do is you're gonna submit the course for review, okay? 
and then Udemy is gonna go through your course and make sure that the audio and video levels are okay. Those are the things that they're gonna focus on. They're gonna focus on the audio and they're gonna focus on the video. They're gonna be very critical, all right? Um, ultimately, they'll, they'll probably pass you, but they'll have some things that they don't like. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect to get, get it through the system, but they won't publish you if you have like, you know, halfway through one of the, the videos, a fire alarm goes off or something like that, right? Because that's going to really distract people. So somebody's going to go through the course and then they're going to rate each lecture by the audio and video level. And then they're going to tell you, okay, you can publish this course once you fix this video and this video and this video. And... We can get more into how to fix um, audio and how to get rid of background noise and all that kind of stuff, but basically what you'll probably have to do is go through some of your videos and eliminate some of the background noise. This is gonna garble your voice a little bit. That's why I really like using a Yeti mic because it records the audio quite well and focuses on my voice, whereas when I use other microphones, they pick up too much of the environment and then I have to use noise reduction or I have to, I have to send the, the video through some kind of process that gets rid of the background noise. But in doing that, it makes my voice sound robotic and less personable. So that's why I really like the Yeti mic because I don't have to do that audio kind of, that filtering process. So this sounds more like my real voice. And I, ha I have a habit of yelling a little bit. So right now, this the audio quality of this video isn't really the best because I'm overdoing the microphone. It should be kind of further away and I should be talking to it like this. This is really what's going to be ideal. Um, if you look in the section down here, we can see that the microphone levels are jumping, right? You don't want them to be red like that. See how they're red? That means that I'm overdoing it a little bit, okay? But anyway. Okay, so we've talked about that. Now I think one of the last things we need to talk about is the difference between free and paid courses on Udemy. And Okay, I'm going to talk about some stuff here that you guys are going to have to just trust me on, okay? Let me get to... Oh my god, this cat is playing with my headphones and it's driving me crazy. Look, it's a cute kitten. Oh. Okay. We are going to go to my instructor, my instructor dashboard. All right. I need to talk to you guys about free and paid courses. I believe that the best way to make a course is to work on it till you get get it to a point where it's 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 like uh, not half baked but you're you're confident in it but you know that it still needs work and then to release it and to continuously improve on the course over and over look at your feedback take your course again later after you've published it taken some time away and redo videos add more content to it listen to your feedback keep improving your course i believe that that's the best way to make a course in my head, I think that to the, the path to a highly successful Udemy course takes about a year. And it doesn't work if you try and think about making the perfect course. If you try and get that perfect course made, ultimately you're wasting a lot of effort. Because really, what you should do is get a course made. Get the content to exist and then in the act of making the course, you're going to learn more. You're going to be able to make the course better. The worst thing you can do is make a course and have it be available for free. Let me explain why. There's an analytic called, let, let's look at our analytics actually. We're going to go to, um, I think to reviews here. Yes, content consumed. This is critical. This is the most important analytic as far as Udemy is concerned. All right, so this course has a very high engagement rate. You can see that the average is one hour, and the average engagement rate per student for this course is almost three hours, okay? So we have almost triple the average engagement rate for courses of my category. So that's really good. We also have better reviews than the average, also very good. But this is absolutely critical that you understand that the most important metric for you to me is are the people who buy your course actually watching the course it's not about how many times you sell the course 
It's about how much your students engage in your course. If Udemy sees that your students are engaging in your course, then they're going to push your course. They're going to market your course more. They're going to get your course to sell more often. If Udemy sees that a thousand people have your course and only 10 of them are watching it, they're way less prone to pushing your course. Your course is going to do much worse because the analytics look bad. And by publishing it for free, you effectively kill it, okay? And I'm not, maybe it's not that extreme, but in, in, as far as I understand, that's basically how the system works. And the reason for that is because that the people who have free courses on Udemy or the, the people who buy free courses and the people who buy paid courses are very different. The people who get free courses, they're just trying to, they like the idea of having as many courses available as they can, and maybe someday they'll go through them. So what you'll find is that you get tons of students to enroll almost off the bat. Like my How to Put Chronic Fatigue in Your Past course, which is free, um, that course got like three or 400 signups in the first like three or four days. That's more than my whole student list here. But what's really happening is there's a couple thousand people who get every free course as soon as it becomes available. So they're getting your course, they're not engaging with your course. So you're gonna wreck the analytics. And the funny thing is, you're doing it for free because you think that it's gonna help, but it's actually going to hurt you. You want people to have to pay a little bit whether it's a dollar, 20 bucks, whatever. You want them to have to lose something in order to take your course because otherwise they are not incentivized to actually take the course. You cannot rely on just being like, oh, you know, well, if they buy the course, they should just finish it. Look, we're talking about people on the internet. That is not how they work. You have to understand the incentives, okay? So please, please, please do not publish a free course. Make your course paid. The only reason I have this free course was to figure out if what I thought about free courses was true and for the fact that this is something that I wouldn't charge people for because it's information about how to overcome a disease. And I don't think that people should have to pay for that information. Um, so let me talk a little bit more about this because I, I went through and I had an experience that talks that that will kind of shed some light for you guys on this concept. Okay. I published a YouTube course, right? Or I published a Udemy course about a subject that I am not wealthy in. I know tons about dropshipping. I, I can educate people about dropshipping. No doubt about that. I can maintain my soul against people who make lots of money. I can hold my own in conversation. I can ask questions. I understand how the business models work. I understand the different business models. I understand the different software. I've gotten a lot of experience with it. I'm in a very bit good position to teach people, but I'm not in a good position to show people a system to earn money, right? And what was kind of controversial when I started is that people were like, why are you selling a course when you haven't earned a lot of money on this, right? And so the concept is, okay, I have these YouTube videos where everything is free. All the information that I show on YouTube is free, right? So we have people on YouTube telling me that I shouldn't publish this course. One of the things people would say to me is that it completely changes once you start uh, start charging people money. They're going to be much more critical of you. It's just going to be much more complicated. They're going to hold you to a higher uh, standard. They're going to expect more from you, right? And so that kind of makes sense, right? Okay, they're giving you some money for this. So they're going to, like, that. that's a logical progression, right? But guys, it's not that simple. What I actually found, get this. People took my course. They went to my YouTube channel. They saw videos about how I hadn't earned a whole lot, but a lot of money. What you would expect is that they'd be all up in arms, get a refund, and be mad at me. Two people messaged me in my course saying they saw the video and asked if they could do anything to help. I have found that my Udemy students are incredibly supportive of me. They are incredibly nurturing, incredibly kind, and understanding. Whereas my YouTube audience, 
a lot of them are like that, but there's also a lot of bad apples who are mean as shit and really ungrateful. A lot of people just like to have an opinion. And when anything is available for free, you will be critiqued much more harshly. And that's, that's ultimately why I'm ending with this whole concept of free versus paid course is because if you can take any one thing from this video, I want you to take this. Do not publish a free course. Free courses, the reviewers are much harsher. You're going to get people who take your free course, they look at one video, they give you a one star, and then they never respond to any message that you say. Okay, you're going to get that from people who paid for your course, but you're going to get way less of them because they have to actually pay for your course in the first place. And if they don't like it, they can just get their money back. It's not that big of a deal. My point here, it's not as simple as you think it is. And when you have an audience who pays for your content, that audience is much more likely to believe in you and be more supportive than the audience who gets your content for free. Think about that situation I showed you, right? I published this course even though I wasn't earning a whole lot of money drop shipping. Granted, the reason for that is that I haven't, it's not that I don't know how to, it's that I don't, like, that's not my incentive right now. I'm not trying to get rich drop shipping. I'm trying to learn a lot about it and have fun. It's different, right? But my point here, I published a course, and obviously I'm not, I don't have huge numbers to show you to convince you that I'm worth buying the course from, right? Yet, the people who purchased my course on Udemy are leagues more supportive than the people who get my content for free on YouTube. And there are some awesome people on YouTube. I'm not trying to say that YouTube is trash at all, but as a creator, every creator goes through a phase where they are overwhelmed by the trolling and the negativity in content. And that's because if it's free, everybody has an opinion and they want to have an opinion more than they actually think about their opinion. They, people have opinions just for the hell of having an opinion. There are so many people out there who have an opinion about something, and the only reason they feel that way is because they heard somebody else say something else and they just wanted to disagree with them. They don't realize that that's what's happening, but that really is what's happening. People just like having their own opinion and being unique and being able to school people, be like, oh yeah, I got all your shit figured out. You just gotta do exactly as I tell you. You're fucking horrible. You just gotta fix this, 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 and this. I know your life very easy. If I was you, I'd be a master. I'd, I'd have all this shit figured out. That's the mentality you kind of come across right and by publishing your course for free you will screw your course do not publish your course for free even if you don't feel that it's ready yet if you want to publish your course and then continue working on it which i really highly encourage you to do because that is going to result in a much much better course than if you try and make a perfect course from the very beginning you want to have it be cheap not free do not publish your course for free. You will get tons of signups and it is going to screw up your analytics. And then if you want to ever charge money for the course, the analytics are going to be wrecked. And so Udemy isn't going to push the course until you show that you're pushing it to people. You really want to make sure that you're charging something, even if it's the minimum. I don't, I think the minimum is $5. So even if it's the minimum, like I said, the only reason that I have this course completely for free is because I wanted to test the things that I felt about free courses out and also um, because I don't believe that it that particular subject should be paid for, okay? So that is absolutely everything that I know about making Udemy courses. I hope that this was helpful. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel. I don't always do videos about Udemy. I do videos about pretty a pretty broad range of subjects, drop shipping, I do let's plays, I do tons of stuff. So subscribe if you want to support me. It helps me a lot. And 61% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. Typically it's like 50%. And one of the reasons for that is probably because I never told a single person to subscribe. I just made videos and people subscribed and I was like, cool. But I understand now that I need to remind people, hey, if you like my content and if you want to encourage me, subscribe to my channel. It makes a difference. It really does. All right, guys. I'll see you next time, okay? Ciao.